Uh oh, Jesus. Is not worth it. It's too late to start a kill. And I'm sure I'm useless in the hands of the creator. Okay, what's going on? I'm not enough. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. There we go. Like, what's going on? What's going on? Good morning, good morning. How are you? Then came your healing, affirming word. Good morning to everybody that will get on. Good morning, good morning. It's a wonderful, wonderful. I'm good. How are you? I am good. I'm good. Things are good. God is awesome. Healing, firming word, writing on my. Hallelujah. God is an awesome God. He's amazing. He's amazing. He's amazing. He's amazing. He's amazing. Something is in my eye, on my eye, or something. He is amazing. God is amazing. Hallelujah. I pray that you all know that God is amazing. Good morning to all those that will get uh, that are on live and that will get on the replay or that will watch on uh, my YouTube channel. Uh, I am Tamara Rochelle, um, also known as Tammy to my friends and family. Um, I am a, a published author. I just released my second book on yesterday. It is available on Amazon, on Kindle. You can get it on my website, TamaraRochelle.com. Um, what else? Um, I have two books on Amazon, uh, Book Wild and the Preacher and Preacher's Heart. I have a book, another book coming out later this summer um, called You Didn't Come For Me, which is talking about being fatherless. Uh, um, from a Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, and... Um, uh, I have the you didn't come for me, which talks about being fatherless. Was that's what uh, we talked about all of the month of uh, the month of May. We talked about fatherlessness, and um, it's from a natural, from a, a, a biological standpoint and a spiritual standpoint. How spirit, you know, my natural father was uh, was only around uh, for certain many a certain amount of years in my life, and then he uh, was uh, absentee. And um, and then I, God sent a spiritual father. Spiritual father came into my life and um, was a very, very, uh, very help, a very present help. That he was um, what I needed at the at the time. And then um, when I needed him the most, he uh, I was dropped. And so it, that's what the book "You Didn't Come for Me" is about. That will be coming out later this summer. And um, another, which I got some other, some other ventures and some other things that are that are uh, some other books that will be coming out. I'm trying to put uh, put at least at least four out this year, at least four out um, this year. So um, God is good, and um, so uh, I just get on Periscope to just encourage people, encourage people, let them know about my testimony. Yes, I was fatherless. I was pregnant at 15, had an abortion. Um, I. Um, uh, Good morning, Elder Barrett. Um, what else? Uh, what else about me? Um, pregnant at 15, had an abortion. I was a, I'm an ex-homosexual. Um, used to be in a relationship with a with a female, um, and uh, that's part of, that's part of my testimony. Um, uh, the one thing I can share with you all is that you don't have to be ashamed or afraid of your testimony and what happened to you in your past because your past is never your potential. It's just something. It's just something you had to go through. Part of the process of your life that you had to go through to get to get to where you are right now in this in the season and what God wants to do and what He wants to pour into you and so that you can pour into others. Um, I am. I'm not ashamed of anything that I've gone through, anything that I've been through. Um, I believe that God used it for me for such a time as this, that it, this is the right time because God is moving me forward um, with my with my testimony and with the things that I've gone through. And so my encouragement is always that you don't have to uh, you don't have to be. Uh, you don't have to be that person that's ashamed. You don't have to be that person that that uh, that that doesn't understand, that doesn't have an understanding of why you went through what you went through. Because if you get in God long enough and stay in the vein of God and stay in the face of God and then the the presence of God, He will show you why you went through what you went through. And so um, and so that's just that's you know I don't I really don't have much to say today. I'm very excited about the release of my book on yesterday. It was a, I had an excited I had an excitement in me that that I didn't feel the 
first time. I was excited the first the first book, but I was more fearful the first time that I published the, the, my first book. So yesterday was a was a different day. It was um, it was not it was just pure excitement um, because I'm seeing my dream realized. I'm seeing. Um, you know, the, when you talk about something for so long and say you're going to do something and then you see it before you, you see it, you got, uh, uh words of prophecy that, uh, that talk, that talk about, um, you know, what you're going to do in life and what God has for you. And I had, I got a prophecy some years ago, um, that, uh, that, uh, and actually, actually just in the, in the last couple of months, I got the, another, another prophecy, um, like a couple months ago, um, that, uh, that, that somebody said, they said, uh, both of them was, it was about books and they saw saw just millions of books around me and they were my own books and so um and I see that I see that dream yes I only have two but it's more coming and so I, I thank God for the creativity and for the things that he's doing in me that that were locked up because sometimes we can get into a, in a place where we're locked up and we're locked up because of other people we're locked up because of fear we're locked up because of um because of because of our own inhibitions to, to go forward. We don't, we don't want, and my thing was, uh, for so long, I was afraid of the criticism that I would receive if I wrote a book. And so that's why it kind of took me so long to do it and to write it was because, um, because I didn't, because I, I wasn't, I didn't know what people were going to say. I didn't know if people were going to like my work. I didn't know, uh, how that was going to go down. But then when I realized that, that when I got criticism from from an editor that just kind of shut me down, uh, edit, this this I was sending my stuff out for, for it to be edited, and when I when she shut me down with her criticism, and I am one that I can take cr constructive criticism, but I don't like negativity, and she was very negative with her criticism. She and it shut me down for like a month or two uh, with my first book, and I and that thing died on the inside of me. I was like, it's dead to me. Um, because I was just like, if, if, if she doesn't like it and she feels this way, then everybody's going to feel that way. Well, that wasn't the case. And so what I did to get out of that, out of that place, because I'm telling you that thing that my manuscript just totally died to me. It died in my mind. It died in my heart. And, but, but, and, and it was just, it, I had to get past the negativity in her criticisms. And that's what, that's what the problem was. And so when I went back and I, t I ate the fish and spit out the bones and I looked at what she said looked at looked at took out the positive and looked at what she said that was beneficial to my to my career and to my writing career and then uh, be, when it was be, what was beneficial to me, what I could use to go to the next level is what I did. I took out that stuff. I went back, re, 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 re went line by line on the manuscript, line by line and redid it. And then I was like, when, once I was done, I breathed and I, I, I took a, 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 I exhaled and said, this is perfection because I was happy with it. And I was, and then when I look back, I was glad that I received that criticism because if I, even, even with the negativity, because sometimes you, 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 sometimes people need to be brutally honest with you, but you know, you don't have to be negative when you're brutally honest. And, but I took what she said and I, I redid it, restructured, redid everything that I was supposed to to do um and um and uh and and that was the best thing her 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 words were the best thing that I needed because if I had not taken her words then I wouldn't I would have put out crap I would have put out something that my name does not represent or that my excellence doesn't represent and sometimes God will send people that will rub you the wrong way and you have to know how to uh you have to know how to maneuver don't you know and I, I shut down I did I, I shut down um for for a Cup for about a month and a half, two months, I shut down. But then when I got to the place where I was like, okay, uh, you know, where God, you know, pick it back up, and I and I, and I slowly did it, and slowly looked at it, and slowly did it, and then I got back to it, and I said, okay, she was right about some things. Now, something she was wrong about, but something she was right about, and so I, and when I when I took that took her words, redid what I did. And then I, and then I was able to produce a product that I was happy with, that I was actually able to smile about and that I can look back and look at the reviews on Amazon and say, look, people love this. Now, yeah, you, you not everybody's flavor. And that's what I tell myself. Some people are going to love you. Some people are not. Some people going to love your work. Some people are not. And you have to be okay with that. You have to be okay with that criticism. You have to, even in life, not just whatever your craft is, you have to be okay with that. You have to be okay with 
with nobody nobody's gonna nobody's gonna like your paintings some people will some people gonna buy them some people won't and I, I'm okay with that I'm okay with if, if you if people come to me and say oh you wrote a book that's nice blah 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 and I, I, if they not everybody's not gonna buy it everybody's not gonna read it and that's okay and you have to be okay with the process because God is God is using this part it's the Bible says despise not the day of small beginnings and whatever you're in don't despise the day of small beginning because God is going to do something with that small beginning and he's going to begin to he's going to begin to to to, um, to make you massive in the eyes of people he's going to begin to you well, your name is going to go out before people and things are going to begin to take place doors are going to begin to open for you in that place and so you have to be in a place where you're processed you have to be in a place where where God you have you allowed the process to happen and I and I and God gave me that about two years ago submit to the process and if you submit to the process the things will go ego will go smoother than they ever have even in the midst of adversity things go smooth the adversity will be there but it will be a smooth adversity and I've gone through it where I've where I've looked at it and said well you know what I'm, I'm going through stuff but it's not as it's not as bad as I thought because I submitted to it I submitted to God I submitted my will I submitted my heart I was like God I'm not going to rebel I'm not going to do things against your will I'm going to do what you called me to do and that's why I'm in this place right now because and I and that's why I'm excited about this place I'm excited about where God is taking me I'm excited about where I'm going I'm excited about the books I'm excited about other ventures um, that I have going on I'm excited about the open doors because because I got I, I, I decided with the first book I got rid of fear that I'm not gonna fear what people say I got rid of uh, oh my god nobody has ever read anything I've written uh, in all my years and uh, and I got rid of I, I just said you know what I'm not gonna walk in fear I'm gonna do this and so we have to get to the point where we make that decision and now we were talking about that yesterday or the day before about making a decision that you have to make a decision to live to be better than you were yesterday you make a decision not to fear you have to make that decision because fear is nothing it is because he's not giving us the spirit of fear and if you recite if you recite the Word of God and pray the Word of God that thing will begin to break when you get to a place where you you look at it and you're saying oh, oh this is unknown this is uh, this is unfamiliar to me I don't know what this is that's that's fear trying to creep in to stop you from going forward and if you if you continue to stop you're never going to get to the destination so this is a time where you have you can't stop get to the destination don't let fear stop you don't let it creep in because it is subtle it'll creep in and before you know it you're like well why am I stagnant why am I stuck because you allow fear you allow that thing to creep in and to slither inside your heart and in your mind and it, it because it, it all starts in the mind because you're you where your mind is you're like oh my goodness the thoughts start to come where you're where you're thinking crazy things and you're oh and, and then you start talking yourself out of things and so God has called us to obey and so they you know I've heard that they say if you um if you don't obey in in 10 seconds then you're going to talk yourself out of something so we have to get to a place where we're obedient and so that is my prayer for you and that's my prayer for me that when I hear the day I hear his voice that I don't harden my heart against him I don't I don't rebel I don't I don't uh 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 stiffen up and be like I'm in fear okay I can't do it no you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you he gives us the power he gives us the authority he gives us wisdom he gives us knowledge everything that we need is already in us it's, it's just lying dormant in you and so we have to get to the place where where we are where things are that that uh that that the the, the the dormancy the things that are lying dormant in us are being stirred and we're stirring them we're stirring them through prayer we're stirring them through uh reading and 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 and, and uh, uh uh studying our craft perfecting our craft he said he'll perfect that thing which concerns you that's the thing that you have to do perfect the thing that he that concerns you and if that thing is is writing if that thing is business if you're an entrepreneur if you are a, a cake baker you are a uh uh you are a, a exercise guru whatever your craft is he's going to perfect that thing but you have to put in the work if you don't put in the work then will you're never going to be in a place where you need to be you're never going because you're going to be stagnant and stuck and then there's there's stale waters there you're going to be in a place where there's stale waters and you also have to get around people that encourage you get around people that that are going to tell you the truth get around people that 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 that, that, that have no problem speaking the truth in love to you not with negative Get, ask 
ask for criticism. Uh, what 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 should I do better? What can I do better? And and so I welcome the criticism criticism that come from people because I ask questions. Did I do this right? Did I do that right? Uh, what can I do better the next time? And you know to to so that so that um so that I'm better the next time and I want to make a decision every day to be better than I was the next the, the yesterday. I don't want to be sitting um in a place where I'm. I don't want to be sitting in a place where I'm, I'm comfortable or complacent with where I'm at. I'm not complacent. I don't want to be comfortable on my on my nine to five because my, my goal is to get off my nine to five. I knew at 15 when I worked at the Browns Chicken that I would didn't want to work for people ever in life. I did, that is not something that I wanted to do, but it took me, it took from 15 to almost 44 to get the revelation that, 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 that you have to work for it. Because even in church, sometimes they don't, they don't, sometimes they don't preach or, or, or teach that you have to get up and do that. They, they teach that. Oh, if you pray about it, if you just go and you, you got a, you got an idea, you got a, a business idea, you got something that you just, uh, you sit back and you pray about it and then it's going to manifest. No, you have to do do the work. You have to put in the work. And sometimes we as Christians don't put in the work because we think that God is going to just drop it in our lap. We think it's just the manna is going to fall from heaven and it's going to drop in our lap and, and we don't have to do anything. We don't have to do anything to get it. And that is not the truth. And that is the problem with that is the problem today is that um, we, you know, we don't want to put the work in for for uh for the blessing for the favor for the wealth for the we don't for the open door we don't want to put the work in we don't want things uh to come forward uh, to come forth like like they should and so and so we get to a place where 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 we you know where we we get disappointed because we don't see manifestation we don't see good morning my sister good morning my brother uh we don't see manifestation in in the things that we do we don't see manifestation because we are we 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 uh because we we stay stuck and we we thinking oh god is just going to drop this in and it, because in the church we sometimes uh you know we're taught wrong and we have to unlearn some things my pastor is teaching on on holiness and he's talking uh to, he was saying how i need to uh unlearn you, you guys need to unlearn some things that you've been taught over the years that may be erroneous because sometimes we are taught some things that are not that are not biblical and we have to be it has to be unlearned in us we have to we have to uh, remove the seeds that were planted in us and so and, and i know for me the, the one of the seeds that was planted in, in me in church was that I didn't have to work for anything. You know, yes, we heard the scripture, faith without works is dead, but it was just go to your prayer closet. You have an idea, go to your prayer closet and just pray, pray about it. And then it's going to manifest, but that well, that's not the truth. And so, so many of us are so behind because we believe that thinking, we believe the erroneous doctrine of man. It wasn't Jesus Christ's doctrine. It was the doctrine of men who, 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 who didn't, who didn't, uh, uh, uh didn't have a, the knowledge and the wisdom to tell you to know you have to, you have to put together a business plan. No, you have to, you, you have to uh, do the research. You got Google, you got Bing, you got uh, all these search engines that you got to put in the work to do. You can't sit back and just do nothing because this is not the time to just do nothing because nothing is going to manifest. It's just like your bank account. If you put nothing in, there's nothing going to come out. You're going to be overdrawn all the time. If nothing is going in and you're steadily going to the bank, pulling out money, there's nothing going, you are, you have nothing. And it's the same way in the kingdom. You, you, Yes, we have the word, we have the blueprint, we have the plan, and we, and especially if you have a vision, you wrote the vision down, you write it down, you make it plain, you, you read it, you run with it, you pray over it, you prophesy over it, you do all of that, but then if you don't get up, after you get out the prayer closet and go put that vision to work, if you don't go establish uh, connections, if you don't go and... um if you don't go establish connections, if you don't go and network, if you don't go um, and uh, 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 and do the research and talk to people in that field and in that in in that industry that you're trying to get in, then you're going to be bankrupt. There's nothing going. You're not going to get anything, and then there that that causes frustration. Your frustration is going to be at its apex. You're going to be frustrated about your purpose because you're not walking in purpose because you're not doing. You're not fully doing what you're supposed to do. And so and so, my encouragement is to do the work. 
work. You have to do the work. You can't leave it to chance. You can't just, you know, uh, uh, throw the dice. You're rolling the dice and just saying, okay, if it roll, hopefully it don't hit snake eyes. You're go, you're going to have to go do the work. We all have to do the work. Faith without works is dead. He said he he said that he would bless your hands. Whatever you put your hands to is going to be blessed. It's going to be successful. And if we don't do the word, if we are not doers of the word, then we are not going to get the blessing of the Lord. We're not going to get anything from God if we don't do our part. We have to do our part. And so uh, and so and, and that's what I had to do because I, I for a long time, for a long time, God bless, for a long time, I was I, I just thought it was going to rain from heaven. I remember back in the day when uh, I always use this as an analogy back in the day when uh, and some of us, you know, we know telling I'm telling my age. I, I don't mind. I'm for going to be 44 in, in a couple months um, that when we had insurance men. And, and vacuum cleaner uh, salesmen that came to the door. They knocked on the door. Things like that, you know, happened back in the day where, oh, people, I met my husband. He was a he was a traveling salesman. And he came and knocked on my door and sold me some insurance. And we began, and we he's my husband now. Things like that used to happen. That's not how it happens now. You actually, and even then, they were putting in work, but the person that, the, on the, that opened the door wasn't really doing anything. They just opened the door. We have to be in a position where we where we go to the, we have the, we, we know who has the open door for us who can open the door and so but we have we putting in the work this is my work right now the the, despise not the day a small beginning this is my work i'm putting in work i just released the book yesterday that's this my work i worked months on the manuscript i worked to get it to perfection i worked to get it to a place where i was able to release it to the public and release it to the people and and not be in fear of what they're gonna say because i know i'm I'm probably gonna get some some people gonna be like oh i didn't like it oh it was too long oh it didn't do this but you have to be okay with the criticism. Be okay with what people are gonna say. Be like, oh well, you didn't like it. Next, because I have, if you on my on, on, on Amazon, my first book, Buckwild and the Preacher. If you, I have fifty reviews out there. Um, I believe forty. 46 of them are are like five star reviews but then I have a two star I have a three star I have a couple four stars so it's just like what you you have to get oh you have to be okay with whatever craft that you got you have to be okay with the criticism that's gonna come because that is that is part of the process that's part of the making that's part of of, of you don't be afraid of it don't be afraid because and I was afraid of it that's why it took me years to put out a book because I was afraid of it and that but I'm not afraid yesterday was a great day for me I was so excited I felt very different yesterday than I did when I first published my first book and so and I and I and I'm, I'm thanking God for the elevation because it's growth and it's maturity and we have to get to that place where it's growth and maturity so my admonishment and my encouragement is to put in the work do the work don't be afraid don't be ashamed if you are in fear then you need to pray fear off of you you need to you what you need to do is whatever you've been trying to do just just do it. Don't don't make excuses. Don't just do it. I had to look myself in the mirror and tell myself either you're going to write a book or you're going to shut up about it. And that's and I had to look myself. I didn't I didn't go to anybody. I didn't I didn't oh, let me let me do I didn't pray. I did nothing. I looked myself in the in the I looked went to my bathroom mirror. I looked in the mirror and I said either you're going to write the book or you're going to shut up telling people that you're writing the book because people, people like when you're, when your book coming out, when your book, and I had no answer for them because I was making excuses because I was afraid. I was in fear. You don't have to be in fear because God is not giving you the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So that is my encouragement. So let me pray real quick about this because it's just I just wanted to encourage you I really sometimes when I come on I really don't know what I'm going to say or what and and, you know and I I thank God when somebody confirms that this is what they needed to hear because I never know uh sometimes sometimes I know exactly God has dropped it in my spirit this is what you need to say but sometimes it's like I don't know and I just start talking and then people say oh I needed to hear this so I'm I'm grateful for the leading of the Holy Spirit because I never want to do anything in and of myself or out of my flesh because I don't want to walk in the flesh. I, that y'all know that's my favorite scripture, Galatians 5, 16, walk in the spirit so you don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. I don't want to be in my flesh and I don't want, I don't want to talk uh, out of my flesh or just talking to be talking. I don't want to just, you know, I don't look, I don't like hearing myself. I don't like seeing myself. So, um, so I pray that when I say something, when I, when, when I come on scope and I'm going to start doing, um, I'm going to start doing uh, Facebook Live, get on Facebook Live um, as well with some things. But I, I pray that when I when I come on here that you guys get something out of it.
Okay, well, you know what? Don't, there's nothing to fear. There's nothing to fear. What are you fearing? Seriously, what do you, you have to, what do you fear? You have to ask yourself, what do you fear? What is it that you fear? Do you fear the, the opinions of me and what people are going to say? Do you fear that nobody's going to like what you write? Do you fear, because I had all those fears. I had the same fears that nobody was going to read it, you know, because I, I went through life. I was, I went through life. I was, I, I, that's how I got all my emotions out. I used to write, I used to write because I was, um, because no, I, I felt like, um, nobody listened to me, period. No, I felt like nobody listened. Sometimes when I get on scope, I'd be like, ain't nobody listening to me. So I have to cast those thoughts down because I'm like, ain't nobody listening because I've always, that was one of the things that, um, that, that, that plagued me when I was younger was that I was there for everybody and was able to listen to people when they had issues and stuff like that. And then when I had issues and wanted to talk, nobody was there for me. And I believe that that was part of my process that God was making me into something or in, he was making me into going through that process process of having to be uh, 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 knowing what it was like to have to call on him and knowing what it was like to have to depend on him um, uh, for some things and um one of the women she's on here she just uh she getting off and on i don't know if she if it's freezing but uh elder barrett was very synonymous in me coming out of that don't talk stage because i as much as i talk now i never talked when i was uh younger uh, i really never talked because i shut down when i think when i when i felt people weren't listening and so what i would do i would write I would write and one day um, I, I had to tell her something that I had uh, this was some years ago I had to tell her that I had end up uh, falling into sin and had uh, uh, slept with this guy and I wrote it down for her I wrote a whole nice little letter we went to a restaurant she was like um, uh, I slid her the letter she said nope you gonna tell me what happened and I was like no nah. she said well we gonna sit here all night I don't know even, even know if she remember that uh, but she was like we'll sit in this restaurant all night until you open up and so that was part of my deliverance that I felt like oh somebody's actually listening but you have to get to the place where you know people you be kind you have to be confident in your own work if you're not confident in it then it then it's not then nobody else is going to is, is going to like it because because the the spirit of the creator is on the creation remember that your spirit what you put into it is on the creation and people can feel your emotion in whatever they're reading that you wrote and it, they can feel it and so you have to be you have to you have to have the right mindset the right heart when you're writing stuff and you have to be confident that this is going to be a bestseller even if it ain't a bestseller who knows it may be a bestseller years from now but you have to have the mindset and you have to be confident in that thing so don't fear whatever your fear is you got to get rid of that fear you got to get rid of that fear you have to get rid of that fear. Don't be in fear to uh, uh, you because and, and, and if, if I know if you are a writer and um, if you are a writer and, 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 and that's what you do, I'm sure you got notebooks full of stuff. You, you go over it. You look over it. There's things that you that because I did. I was the same way. I had notebooks full of stuff. I had stories. I had uh, little skits that I wrote, but I was just like, nobody's going to want to read this stuff. And I, and I talked myself out of it. I no longer do that. I no longer do that. You got to get a get you got to let somebody read your stuff and let somebody encourage you and say this is good and somebody you can really trust and say okay not somebody who just going to placate you and be like and pacify you and all that kind of stuff no we don't we don't want those type of people we want people who going to read it and going to be like you know it, well you need to change this or, and my biggest crit critic is my mother because my mother is an avid reader she's an avid reader she's an avid writer and um I'm trying to get her to publish some of her stuff but she's a she's and, and so she's my biggest critic. And so when I get the proof of my books, she the first person to get it here. Tell me what's wrong with it. And the first thing she I mean, she didn't had a book fast. She didn't had a book two minutes. And it was like the back cover. And I said, oh, Jesus Christ. So it was it. But it was it was like, OK, I said, go through the book market, whatever. And and that's what she did. So you have to get somebody that you can trust, even though it's going to be like, oh, my goodness, you're going to be like, geez, you, you still got to get somebody you can trust in your corner. That's going to be honest with you. But then that's going to tell you this is still good. This is, you know, it's going to encourage you and back you in that because I have that in my life. And, and, and but it took years to get those people in my life. And it took years for me to trust those people to be able to say, OK, this is this is my product. This is what God has called me to do. OK, here it is. Here it is. And so you have to be okay with that. So if you are a writer, write. Don't be in fear to write, okay? You got to trust God. You can you can contact contact me on um uh on, on Facebook. Send me a message on Facebook. You can go to uh uh Tammy T A M M Y 
the author Hannah H A N N A and send me a message so we can talk further um, off of Periscopes. Okay, so let me pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just come before Your throne today, Lord God. We bless You and we praise You, Lord God, for Your presence because in Your presence, Lord God, excuse me, there's fullness of joy. In Your presence, there are pleasures just for more Lord God and so Lord God I come Lord God praising you and thanking you Lord God for the power Lord God of prayer the power Lord God of encouragement Lord God hallelujah Lord God where your people Lord God may be suffering in fear I bind the spirit of fear Father God because you have not given us the spirit of fear but of power love and a sound mind Lord God in the name of Jesus Lord God so I pray Father God that they would have a sound mind Father God I pray Lord God hallelujah that the spirit of fear will be broken off their thought path out of their heart, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that fear cannot grip them, fear cannot uh, uh, subtly come in, Father God, and stop them, Lord God, hallelujah, and cause barricades, Lord God, and blockages, Lord God, in the spirit, Lord God, and in the natural, Lord God, that will stop them, Lord God, from going forward, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, I decree and declare, Father God, that you would give them courage, Lord God, in this season of their life to move forward, Lord God, to move forward in the thing that you've called them to do, Father God, I decree that, Lord God, and I pray Pull out, Lord God, every book, Lord God, that is in the people, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, concerning testimonies, Lord God, concerning cookbooks, Lord God, hallelujah, whatever, Lord, you have, God, that they manuals, Lord God, for trances, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that you have placed in them, Lord God, something, Lord God, for this season of their life, Father God, to bring them wealth, to bring wealth into the kingdom, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, and Lord God, that they would obey, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that they will, when they hear, their, hear your voice, Lord God, they won't harden their hearts, Lord God, they won't rebel against you, Lord God, they won't rebel because of fear, Lord God, they won't rebel because of doubt, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that they will not doubt themselves, Father God, but they will be courageous in this season, Lord God. They will be as bold as lions in this season, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, because you've given us power over all the power of the enemy, Lord God, and nothing shall harm us. Criticism shall, uh, is not going to harm us, Lord God. People's opinions is not going to harm us, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, but you are doing a work, Father God, in the people like never before, Lord God, and causing them, Lord God, hallelujah, to walk in purpose, Lord God, causing them to walk in destiny, Lord God, causing them to walk according to your word and to according to your plan, according to your purpose, Lord God, that you have for them from the foundation of the world, Lord God. I bind fear, I bind doubt, I bind unbelief, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, and Lord God, that you would place people around them, covenant partners, Lord God, hallelujah, Lord God, a team of people, Lord God, that will bring encouragement, Lord God, hallelujah, that will bring criticism that doesn't involve negativity, in the name of Jesus, Father God, but Lord God, that you would, Lord God, take them, Lord God, from faith to faith, from glory to glory, and take them, walk them right into the place that that they need to be, Lord God. Open doors, Father God, in the name of Jesus that have been closed, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Hallelujah. Open doors, Father God, in their, in their thought pattern, Father God, to even think outside the box, Lord God. Stir up the creativity on the inside of your people, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Father God, and truly, Father God, have your way with them, Lord God. Your kingdom come and your will be done, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So I pray for each and every one of you. I pray that God will continue to move on your behalf. Please, if you need if you need some encouragement, you need to talk more seriously. Uh, look me up on Facebook. Hit me on Facebook. Go, go to my what you can do is go to my website. Uh, TamaraRochelle.com Go to my website And you can um, uh, Click on the Facebook link And it'll link I think it'll link To my author page If you send me a message On the author page Then I will link you To my uh, my other Facebook page um, And so um, You guys be encouraged today Be encouraged Because God um, God wants to do something In your life And he And and, and obviously he, he wants to use me To help you do it uh, And I'm okay with that I'm okay with whatever God wants to do um, Thank you for those that are, that are live Thank you for the heart Thank you for inviting your followers. Thank you for all of that. I appreciate the love. Buy the books. The books came. The book came out yesterday. Preacher's Heart came out yesterday. Buy the book. You can buy it on my uh, on my website. I have uh, both books that you can buy um, uh, together. Um, or if you don't have the first one, or you can get on Amazon and download the Kindle. They're only ninety nine cents. They're fifteen dollars on my website. You can buy the read, pray, listen T shirts on my website. Um, God is awesome, and He's doing an awesome thing, not just in me, but in you too. And you have to, you have to uh, know that God is doing an awesome thing. You have to know that He wants to use you for His glory. And so you have to be used for His glory. You have to be, you have to want to be used for His glory. So you, good morning, Aisha. 
gonna have to watch on the replay, honey. You done missed it. Um, but you have to know that God wants to use you for, for his glory. This is the time that you have to get out of yourself and get into God because that is where your that is where your strength lies. That's where your creativity lies. That's where uh, direction lies. Everything is in God, and I am learning that. I am learning that that everything that that I that I desire to have it's already in it's in me, but it's in Him. And if I don't get in Him, if I don't get in the Word, if I don't get in in worship, if I don't if I'm not intimate with God and spend quality time with Him, then I'm never none of none any none of that is going to rise up and come out of me. But I thank God for the the birthing process and I thank God for the midwife that has been in my life uh, for the last I don't know 10 15 years that has helped me and moved me along and 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 and, and caused me uh, to, 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 to to for this baby because it was breached for for a lot for a lot of years the, then then the baby decided it didn't want to come it shrunk a little bit I, it, I've been going through some birthing pains but when you're in that but but I had to I had to get myself in those stirrups I I've never had a baby but I know what it's like to have a uh uh, 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 what you call them things? Um, uh, uh, the women, uh, the pap smears and all of that kind of stuff. Oh, sorry for the men that's on here, but you, when you would have to put your legs in them stirrups and, and you have to push or you go through the C-section where it has to be cut out of you. I had to get to that place and I had a midwife, a spiritual midwife in my life that, that allowed me and afforded me the opportunity. Hallelujah. That she, that, that her gifting, uh, uh, uh help, help me birth my baby. So get, get you some midwives, pray and ask God for the midwives that will come and that know how to to stir you up, but know how to also bring that thing uh, out of you. Know how to pull it out of you. Know how to get you to to push and and uh, and push. And it's going. And it's not. It's, sometimes it's not going to be instant. But you have. But it, you have to labor with that thing. Some people have labor pains for 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 hours. Have labor pains for hours. And but but in the end result is the baby. The end result is the baby. And so I'm on my second baby. This is my second baby. My third baby coming in a couple months. So you have to get to the place where that baby. You want you want to see the baby and and the, and the baby the seeing the baby is greater than the pain that you're going through right now, okay? So y'all be encouraged. I love you, man. I'm so excited. I really am excited about what God is doing. I'm so excited. I am so excited about what God is doing. It is an awesome thing. And so I'm and I'm excited for you all because I and I, I'm excited for you. Seriously, I am. If you have a product, you have something, please let me know because I will buy it. I like to sow into other people because I want people to sow into me. And that's how we that's how we move forward in God. That's how because we have to sow. We reap what we sow. I want to sow into you. So if you have something. Please let me know because I want to buy it. I want to be a blessing to you. Um, okay, so I will see you all later. Y'all have a wonderful and blessed, blessed Wednesday. It's a worship Wednesday. It's a worth it Wednesday because it's worth it. To, it's worth it to serve God. It's worth it to serve God. I will see you all on tomorrow. See you all. Y'all have a good day. And of course, don't want to let me off. Nope. Come on, man. All right, let's do this a different way.